Good morning and welcome to St. John's McGuanagall's Morning Praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. The glory of Christ is revealed. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. We read from John chapter 18. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priest handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. This week, we have been talking about the Jewish answers to the existential question of the New Testament early period, Who are we? We remember that there was the process of Hellenization, and you also had the Roman government that was ruling over the Jewish people. And so the Sadducees, their answer was, play nice with the Romans. This is good for us. The status quo is good. Yes, it's not ideal, but we can benefit from being a part of the Roman Empire, or at least they would. The Pharisees wanted to separate themselves, right? They wanted to be theologically orthodox. They wanted to follow these laws. And so they are going to be culturally different, but they are going to remain in their towns. They're going to remain within the system, hoping for a Messiah who is going to come and throw off the Roman oppression and bring about a new kingdom. We also met the Essenes, who saw the corruption in all of it and wanted their own utopia out in the wilderness. They really separated themselves. And then the fourth group, called the Fourth Philosophy by the historian Josephus, but known as the Zealots to us, is a group that really wanted to do something. So they were theologically similar to the Pharisees. They were definitely separated themselves like like the Essenes. But they were not content on waiting. They were going to be active. They were going to do something about this situation, specifically about the Roman oppression. And so they are going to be zealous. Now, being zealous is a good thing. It actually is related to the word for being a follower. If you follow Jesus and you are zealous for Jesus, we would count that as a good thing. But it comes around to describe someone who is outrageously zealous in the point that they are going to They are going to do things to bring about their results, and they are going to justify the means by the end. And so often, they are going to promote violence. 
In fact, one of the ways that they were going to rebel, since they did not have an army that could stand up to the Romans, was that they were going to take little daggers and they were going to, in the marketplace, they were going to enact what we would call terrorism today. And they would execute people that were against their way of thinking with a little dagger under the, their robe and they would, they would stab people. And so the zealots were people who were a part of uprisings. They were a part of rebellions. We're not exactly sure, but it seems that maybe Barabbas was a part of this. And so we see Barabbas who was a part of an uprising. One of the things that the zealots um, had in common with each other was that they believed that only their king, Yahweh, could rule over them. And so they were against the idea of the Romans ruling over them. They were also, it seems, maybe against the Sadducees, certainly the Sadducees and their corruption, but against that kind of rule as well. They were definitely pushing against government and had a very liberty kind of way of thinking. Now, as we transfer this into our own culture and our own way of thinking, we warn ourselves of the Sadducees that we don't make this life and our comfort the main goal, the ultimate goal. We warned ourselves of the law of the Pharisees of trying to bring about maybe a theocracy, uh, this idea that we can be righteous, that we are on our way to holiness. It is a self-justification. It's the one place we don't want to be. And, and when we do that, we throw out the need for Jesus and his cross and his mercy and forgiveness, and we become very unforgiving to others as well. We also saw that the Essenes and their utopia out in the wilderness is not the answer either. Yes, we are not of the world, but we are supposed to be in the world in our vocations. We are supposed to minister to people. We're not supposed to leave the culture. And we now have the warning of the zealots. We don't want to violently try to overthrow anything ever, but understand that we have a king of a different kingdom, as Jesus tried to explain to Pilate in our reading today. We trust. We trust that God is in control. We should not expect any government, any culture, any philosophy, any ology, or any ism in a broken world to give us a utopia. That is for the next world. For here, we fight, not violently, but we fight with our minds. We use the faith as a shield, and we use the word of God as our sword. And we work. We work in our vocations. We work hard, and we trust. And then when it's our time, we will go into our final kingdom. Notice that all of these existential answers to this existential question all tried to bring utopia here on earth and it all ended up with law, and there was no room for Jesus, his cross, forgiveness, or faith. Let us be that countercultural, and where we trust Jesus, not any earthly kingdom. But we don't fall apart either. We work, we love, and then we go to heaven. And that's a pretty good life when all is said and done. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious, true, and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father, we believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin, nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.